What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13 beta 3 to register developers a little over two weeks after the release of beta 2 and one week after the release of iOS 13 public beta 1. So of course in this video we're going to be discussing all of the new features and changes here in beta 3. We're also going to talk about the performance, the battery life, and also my experience on iOS 13 beta 2. So let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So you can see here this update came in at about 687 megabytes on my iPhone. 10R. Now, of course, that update size will vary depending on your device and, of course, which software version you're coming from. Now, if you are on the public beta program, the public beta 2 is not out yet for public beta testers. So if you didn't get an update, it's probably because you are a public beta tester, not a developer. You don't have the developer profile installed. I had a lot of people ask me about that. So anyways, let's go and check out the build number here for beta 3. So it's 17A5522F. Now, before we get into the features and changes, I do just want to mention that this update, iOS 13 beta 3 was not released for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Now, that's likely due to a bug specific to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So if you have a 7 or 7 Plus and you were wondering where your update is, it's not coming, at least not today. Now, it may be in, you know, later on today in another over-the-air update specific for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, or it may just be the next public beta, public beta 2, you may have support for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus in that update. So you are gonna get the update eventually, it's just not released just yet, likely due to a bug. All right, so what's new here in iOS 13 beta three? And the very first thing is actually pretty exciting. And I need to get my iPhone 6S right here, which I have a video coming out on soon. 3D Touch is back, kind of, not fully, but 3D Touch is definitely much better on beta three here than it was in beta two. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I've been having a lot of criticism and just a lot of really confusion is the right word with Apple and what they're deciding to do with 3D Touch and Haptic Touch. So I'm not gonna go over all that again because I've talked about it many times, but let me just show you guys that 3D Touch is a little bit better here in Beta 3. It's actually more prominent now and it doesn't seem like Apple is just trying to push Haptic Touch on us on 3D Touch devices. So again, this is the 6S and I can definitely tell that 3D Touch is working instead of Haptic Touch. And if we go ahead over into Twitter, let me show you that you can now peek and pop. So inside of Twitter here, we're gonna peek and pop with more pressure right there. You can see on the photo there inside of Twitter. Now that doesn't work on Safari. I think it's just because Safari has a feature built in where if you 3D touch, it just pulls up this menu. Now, I don't know if it's registering a haptic touch instead of a 3D touch there, but that is still possibly a bug in iOS 13, or it could just be a feature built into Safari. But the good news here is that 3D Touch is working much better on Beta 3. So that's gonna be big news for a lot of you guys out there with 3D Touch capable devices. Now, if we go into our messages here, you're gonna notice down at the very bottom, the dictation icon is bigger than it was in Beta 2. Now, not only is it bigger, but also the microphone icon is filled in. Instead of just being an outline of the microphone, it's now fully filled in. And if we go ahead and take a screenshot here in beta three, if we go into the markup section right here, if we go ahead and click on the plus, you'll notice that we have a new feature there called opacity. And if we go ahead and click on opacity, you can see that it does add an opacity. You have a little slider here as well, and it changes the opacity of the whole screenshot. Now, one thing I don't like about this feature, I think it's a cool feature to be added here in iOS 13, but I wish you could just add it to a specific section of the screenshot because I don't think everybody's going to want you know, to make a fully opaque or, you know, like look like this on the whole screenshot. I feel like a lot of people are going to want it to just be in a certain section of the screenshot. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, uh, but I do like the fact that they are adding new features to important things like markup because we all take screenshots. So it's always nice to have additional features added into the markup section here. Now, if we go into our settings and scroll all the way down to FaceTime, you'll see that we have a new FaceTime feature here called FaceTime Attention Correction. And if you read what it says there, it's very interesting. Thing. So it says your eye contact with the camera will be more accurate during FaceTime video calls. So I'm not entirely sure what this feature does or how it works. I will be testing it out after I shoot this video. Uh, but it seems like that this feature is going to make it so that eye contact, uh, you know, a lot of times when you're looking at FaceTime, you know how you're looking at the other person on the other end of the call. You're not really looking at the camera. So somehow I feel like Apple's going to be able to make it look like we're actually looking at the camera when we're actually looking at the screen. So it seems crazy and like a feature I didn't even realize could be added via software. But if that's what it is, that's actually really cool. So again, I will be testing that because I don't know for sure if that's how the feature works. 
but it is cool that we're getting some new FaceTime features here in iOS 13. So now inside of the mail application, the archive button is now purple. So this whole tab over here is purple instead of blue, like it was in betas one and two. Now, I personally don't like this change. I think the blue looked really good there and it kind of matched with all the accents in the mail application, but that is new here. We do have a purple archive button now in the mail application. Now, if we go ahead over to the app store and we go to the arcade tab, which you guys know, that's one of the top things I hate in iOS 13. You can see we have the Apple Arcade is actually now showing we get a lot more information here about Apple Arcade instead of just a coming soon basically like a splash screen like we had in beta one and two and I will be making a video on Apple Arcade pretty soon I will be subscribing just so I can let you guys know if I think it's worth it and things like that now if we go back to our settings and go down to privacy right here and go to motion and fitness you will see that we have a new icon there in our settings for motion and fitness and just for comparison that's what the motion and fitness icon looked like in iOS 12, iOS 11, and I believe even iOS 10, but now in iOS 13, we have a new icon for motion and fitness, finally. So now if we go into our wallpapers and go to dynamic, the dynamic wallpapers actually change now. You can see they actually move and it's actually very fluid. If we set it for both and go back to our home screen and our lock screen, it's actually fluid now and it works as expected. So for some reason in beta one and two, these bubbles wouldn't even move. The dynamic wallpapers just wouldn't even move for me. So now that has been fixed here in beta three. So those are some of the new features and changes here in iOS 13 beta three. Now I'm sure there are other changes and I will be making a follow up video later on this week with more changes, more features, and more of my experience on beta three when it comes to performance and battery life and things like that. But let's briefly talk about the performance, the battery life, uh, if you should install this on your device and bugs, all kind of things like that. So first of all, I just wanna say that when I first installed iOS 13 beta three here on my iPhone 10 R my iPhone 10 R was like unresponsive for like the first minute plus I would scroll screens like I would try to go to the next screen and it just wouldn't move and it would lag and take like 30 seconds to go to the next screen and it just kind of did it there look at that it's still kind of doing it so it's not very good sometimes here on my iPhone 10 R which is really strange because on my iPhone 10 on my iPhone 6s rather it's very smooth I've not had any issues at all it's actually super fluid and it's a noticeable improvement over beta 2 with my iPhone 6s here and looking at people on Twitter and in forums, a lot of people seem to say that beta three is more fluid than beta two, especially when it comes to like the multitasking window panes right here, uh, just opening applications, just going around the OS seems to be smoother on beta three. But for some reason for me on my iPhone 10 R, that's not the case. I mean, I don't know what it is, you know, just moving from screen to screen even isn't great. I mean, the multitasking and everything is fine. The app switcher is pretty quick and fluid. You can see there it's pretty fluid here on beta three. Actually, it's not. Look at that. So for some reason, my iPhone 10R is just not doing well here on beta three, which is a little bit surprising because again, the iPhone 6S is doing just fine. I will have to load this up on a couple other devices and see if it's just on the iPhone 10R specifically, but doesn't look too good here for beta three for me. I don't know what it is. Beta one and beta two were definitely not as laggy as this iPhone XR is being right here. So very interesting. Another thing I did also want to mention is that the app store, when I first launched it, no content would load up. So I guess it, it's fixed itself now. I did close out of the application and come back in, but still it didn't show any content for a while here on beta three. I never had that issue on any previous beta. Now, when it comes to battery life, it's too early to tell with beta three, but it's probably going to be very close to the same as beta two. Now, beta two, was a very interesting story for me when it comes to battery life. So battery life on my iPhone XR has been great on beta two, but on the iPhone 6S, on the iPhone SE, and on my iPhone 7, beta two did not really do that well when it comes to battery life. So it seems like battery life is much better on these iOS 13 betas on the newer iPhones instead of the older iPhones, which is a little bit disappointing uh, because you know the older iPhones don't even get great battery life as it is. So it would have been nice to see an improvement, but I just wasn't getting that on beta two. So hopefully beta three does improve the battery life. I'm hoping for that. Again, I will be making a video later on this week, letting you guys know if the performance, the battery life, everything improves. I will touch on everything again later this week, especially with the iPhone 10 R here. So I'm really interested to see if it's going to stay this laggy or if it's actually going to fix itself here after like a reboot or something like that. And I know a lot of people ask me about my iPad as well 
well. I will be talking about that in the follow-up video later this week, but it's actually been doing really well on beta 2. A lot of people report bad battery life, but my battery life has actually been really good on the iPad. Performance is also stellar on iOS 13. It's been that way since beta 1. So I will touch on that. I will you know, check it out on beta 3 as well and see how it's doing. You guys can see here, I'm connected to my hotspot. I just moved to a new house, so things are a little bit hectic right now. It's a little bit hard to get everything up and running, uh, but I will be back to normal here very, very soon. So anyway, should you guys go ahead and update to iOS 13 beta 3? And I say yes, especially if you are already on beta 2. There's no reason not to update to beta 3. And if you have a 3D touch capable device, if you have a pressure sensitive screen, definitely update to iOS 13 beta 3. You are going to love having the functionality of 3D touch back. It's very apparent even here in the control center. I'm just now realizing how much better it is in the control center as well. Again, you can peek and pop now. And on the home screen, when you actually 3D touch on buttons, it feels like the old 3D touch again. Now, I'm sure it's not fixed throughout all of iOS 13 just yet, but it is progress. It's progress to get 3D touch back and working instead of just relying on haptic touch and kind of ditching, you know, the feature that we all love for something that even the iPhone XR without a, a pressure sensitive screen can do thanks to the new haptic touch. So yeah, I would definitely update if you do have a 3D touch compatible device. Even if you don't, I think it's a great update. Again, battery life, kind of varies. Everybody's going to have a different experience. Me personally, it's been great for my iPhone XR. Other devices, not so much. And again, when it comes to performance, not doing great for the first time ever on my iPhone XR here, uh, but on the iPhone 6S, it's running just fine. So I will have to report back and see how it does after using it for a couple of days. But just know that everybody's experience is different, but also just know that beta 3, there's not going to be really any like device breaking bugs or anything like that. It's not going to be like, oh, I can't make phone calls. You know, all my data got you know deleted or something like that. You're not really going to have major issues like that. So you are going to be able to get the nice benefits of iOS 13, especially some of these new features like with the FaceTime feature, the new markup feature and things like that. So yeah, let me know if you guys installed iOS 13 beta three. Let me know any of the new features and changes that I may have missed because I'm sure there are some out there and I will plan on covering those later on. Also, let me know how your experience with iOS 13 beta two was. Was it good for you? Was it laggy? How was your battery life? Let me know everything down in those comments below because that's really how I can tell and say a lot of these things in my videos as well as based on your guys' experience. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and of course subscribe so you see my follow-up video later this week as well as coverage on every future iOS 13 beta. So anyways guys, thanks again for watching. Sorry for getting this up a little bit later. Again, I am just currently moving into a new house so I don't even have internet yet. I'm relying on a mobile hotspot so Anyway, bear with me. I will be back to normal. I will be getting my internet tomorrow, so things will be back to normal, and I'll be getting videos up super quick very, very soon. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video, and I'll see you soon.